Oh, are we focused? Hello, welcome to my channel, Kaylee Marie Vintage. Today, I am doing two jumpers in this video. Um, a jumper not being a sweater, but being the dress thing you wear over a shirt in this case. Um, so I have two different patterns here and two different fabrics. Yes, the other fabric is hiding there. So you'll get to come along with me and see how these go. I've never made either of these patterns, so hopefully they turn out okay. I should make a mock-up. Well, I am kind of making a mock-up because these were both $2 a yard. Actually, this one was even cheaper than $2 a yard. I picked this up at a thrift shop. And then this one was $2 a yard way back whenever I picked it up. So these are my mock-ups. Um, so before I ever make any of these patterns in a nicer fabric. Um, but one is an Amy Adams. I've never done it before, like an Amy Adams before, and I'm doing with the duck um, fabric. This is a heavier upholstery fabric, so I'm hoping the fact that there does not appear to be any darts in this uh, to make it easier to use something like an upholstery fabric. Uh, I am also a little nervous about the buttons. Uh, the buttonholes are going to be kind of key on this guy, but I am very excited to make it. It's going to be super cute. So that's going to be this one. Um, you'll get to enjoy the pain that is cutting upholstery fabric for garments. It's always a huge pain and I'm going to have to bind all these seams to keep it from doing this um, on the inside. So that'll be good fun. And then the second jumper that I'm going to be working on or Oh, I guess this one I paid $2.99 for four yards of fabric, which is even cheaper than $2 a yard. Uh, this, I suspect, has some polyester content, but it's definitely a vintage fabric because it's only 34 inches across, and that's usually only true of vintage fabrics. Most fabrics nowadays come at 44 plus from what I've seen, and I have this pattern here. It's very tattered, um, the envelope. I'm excited. I think eventually I'll make a dicky to go under this, but not right now. Uh, I'm going to be sewing both of these again at my parents' house. I'll be working with, I think, a plaid for, I believe, the first time or a second time. Like, I haven't worked with plaid too often, so that'll be interesting and, I think, annoying. But there's not too many seam points on this guy, so I'm hoping it'll be fairly easy. And I really like the pockets on this, and then I like how it uses the blouse under it. So, we will do all that, and I will, I guess, check in with you when I am deciding which one I start with and it will be all ironed and ready to start cutting out my pattern. So I am getting started on cutting. Sorry about any weird audio in the process part of this video. My microphone broke suddenly so I am stranded without a microphone. So that you might hear like some clicking which is just the refocusing of the lens. But let's turn around and show you what is happening. Um, so as you can see here, I have the duck pattern. Um, so right now the struggle here is if I lay it out the way I need to, I have this little bit coming off. So I'm going to have to piece this. I'm not going to be able to get the duck placement as precise as I wanted. So I'm going to be really careful on the front, which is this piece here, in hopes of it being okay. And what's also weird here is they don't seem to have um, the up and down markings on these pieces. Uh, so, so far, this is an Ann Adams pattern, which I don't use with like super frequently. Um, and the instructions are kind of weird, not super impressive. So we're going to kind of see, oh, and then for the facings, which I have here, I'm going to use, you can see there's some black cotton there that I'm going to use for the facings. But for today, I think I am going to check in after I have these cut and maybe one of them pieced together. We'll see. And then I will have the second one today. My goal is mainly to get through the cutting and maybe start on the bound buttonholes for the jumper. We are at a check-in point. So I have my facings here. And then I have the four pieces of the jumper here. Um, so it was really hard to mark on these um, because of the fur, thread, rope, whatever here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew on all the darts and stuff. And then I believe take a look at the buttons. We'll see. But I'll show some of the process of sewing the darts for once. I don't normally do that. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, do it pretty immediately. And then one thing to know, where is it? Um, I didn't have enough fabric, so I had to piece this together. So ideally all my seams on the inside are gonna look like this. So I'm gonna also need to hand stitch this guy 
down. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, but they'll all look like that. Um, and then this one I got pretty close to matching. It's not exact. Um, but that is kind of where we're at. Alrighty, so as you guys can see, I wrapped up on the darts. They're looking good. Well, this one looks way bigger than the one on the other side, but I'm just gonna kind of ignore that. Um, so we have, yeah, the two back pieces, the two front pieces, and I think I'm gonna work on the bound buttonholes next. So I just need to decide which side I want those on, and then I'll get started. Okay, guys, we have our bound buttonholes ready to go. So what I did is I measured a quarter inch bigger than the button, and I marked that on here. Actually, because I chose strips with no little to no embroidery specifically to be able to actually mark on them because all the buttonholes are in this like gross furry stuff on the back and so I couldn't mark on that. Usually I'll mark on the actual garment but in this case we're marking on these guys even though they'll be a little less reliable. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on these bound buttonholes. Alrighty, so... I have all of my bound buttonholes here, um, so those are done. So that is it for tonight. I'm going to do a little hand stitching of the place I not patched but pieced together. Um, but otherwise, that is all I have for tonight. I am going to pick this back up tomorrow and I'll check in when I start. Alrighty, it is the next day, next morning, so I got a little industrious last night and did actually start completing some other things. So as you can see, these are seamed up the middle and the seams are all pressed and like finished. Uh, I'm finishing with bias tape just because this fabric is so messy. Uh, and then I have this pinned and ready to stitch up uh, to go wherever it goes. Um, and then I also realized I screwed up and my fa one of my facings should be this material because it's the like, let me grab the drawings. I realized that I cut one facing out wrong, this one, because it acts as like a fold over for you to anchor the buttons on, which makes more sense because this was feeling really thin without that. Um, and then these are just bias tape um, finishings, which is, I guess, good to know. Um, and then I only needed one of the black facings for the um, covering the buttonholes, I guess, I think. Yeah, for covering the buttonhole side. They do not show that well in that illustration. Um, so I'm gonna get these all stitched together, the side then the tops, and get their edges all finished, and then I will probably check back in. All right, I think we have made it to our last check-in for this project. I will check back in when I start cutting for the next one. But I wanna show you kind of where I'm at. So for my last steps, it's all about facing. So these last one, two, three, four, five steps are all about getting the dress faced correctly. So I'm just using some simple back bias tape for the armholes and the neck, like it says. And then I have this piece cut and I have this longer piece here, which is this piece here. That'll be the backing for the buttonholes. Um, and then we'll just be working on it, and I can't remember if I showed you buttons, but this is the button I'm working with. Uh, super cute, as you can see. And then for seam finishings, these are what they all look like. They're all stitched down. Um, they all look really nice. Um, they were a lot of work, so that is exciting. So yeah, um, the next part of this will be starting cutting on the other project. I've ironed and laid out my next pattern um, for this one. I'm going to show you the process of me cutting it because it is a plaid and a stripe. So I think it's helpful to kind of show you guys how I do it. I pretty much eyeball it and so as long as my camera has battery I will try to show you my process. Here is it all laid out. Um, I have all my pattern pieces over here, instructions and layout here, and then you can see I have my long piece. Um, for this guy I have I believe four yards. And the pattern only calls for three and a half, so I have about an extra half to work with, which is good. Yeah, this plaid is pretty simple. As you can see, 
it's just every other. And then it has an up and down stripe, which is I think my only option anyway for this pattern. I don't think I can have it go side to side, so that's just fine. But yeah, so I am going to cut this and yeah, try to show you guys the process of how I match my patterns. Alright, we are all wrapped up on cutting and I have my first pieces pinned. So as you can see down here, I have my skirts, I have my blouse pieces, all the various facings and then the other top. So I'm just going to work on the darts and getting these first seams down. I have read my instructions. I think I know what I'm doing. Um, the pockets are a bit confusing, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, first, I'm just sewing up the skirt in the middle, even though I think it has me doing the pockets first, but I want to get that done and make sure everything matches. Oh, there are my pockets. Um, and blouse, super self-explanatory. So I'm just starting with that assembly now. All right, I have gotten quite a bit done. So I'll show you what's up. Um, so I have both the front and the back part of the skirt together, and here I have the pockets pinned. It took quite a bit of reading to figure out how these pockets go in, but basically you have the entrance here, and I'll have to be really careful not to sew this when I sew it up, so that'll be fun. Um, and then obviously same treatment on the other pocket, you can see that fold. And then I have the bodice pretty much all sewn and ready to face. Um, so I just have my facings pinned here. And then the biggest thing to note on the bodice is that I'm finding these arm facings quite tricky. Um, and then I don't know that I got my plaids as matched as I desired, but I don't have enough fabric to recut and it's like good enough. Um, they aren't terrible. I think I'm more unhappy with the sides. Um, which the sides are still pretty matched, but like, it's fine. Um, I'm just gonna leave it alone. So, I'm gonna get working on sewing all of this up, and then I'm gonna, I think, get the skirt all the way together, and then I'll check in. Alrighty, we are doing well. I'm actually really pleased with how easy this has been. So, as you can see here, I have my bodice and I have my skirt. I just need to combine them together and put in the zipper and then hem it and we're all done. I don't know if you can see. It looks like you can't. Maybe you can a little bit. But I have my pockets here. This third line is just basting. These two will be permanent. Um, the pocket actually turned out really well. Um, in the future, I think I'll look into doing this for zippers because I've always been frustrated by zipper things where you can only put the pocket in one because this is designed specifically to put a zipper in with. So I'm excited about that. And then the bodice is looking really good. I'm a little anxious about how these are going to line up with these, but it's just going to be what it's going to be. Um, like, there's not much I can do about it, especially since these are, like, diagonal and these are up and down. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, I think I will just be checking in for the real feel for this one. I think otherwise we're completely done.
All right, so we're all done with the reveal. So now I can kind of talk a little bit about each project. I'm wearing one and I'm gonna show you the other one and then we'll swap. Um, but this is the duck. I am really proud of my construction for this one. So the V isn't perfect um, neckline wise, but it is the best V I have made to date, I think. Um, I really feel like I did a good job making sure the back and the front panels like lined up and it didn't feel too wacky. Um, this was interesting, like with the extra panel that I had to add for the buttons according to the pattern and then everything is really finished inside, um, which this was a matter of necessity because this fabric frayed and like these bits like come out or like fray like no other. And so I felt like I had to like really make sure to construct this well. And I think I accomplished that. Um, the inside, let me just flip it completely inside out. You can see is like bias tape here um, and then bias tape on the armholes as well. And then the finishing for the buttonholes is black. And then, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really proud of this one. It turned out exactly as I envisioned it. Um, one thing I really enjoy about sewing creatively that I enjoy less about other things creatively is with sewing, I feel like I envision something and it comes to life. Um, when I paint or I, I'm a graphic designer or when I do my job, I feel like nothing ever looks 100% what I picture in my brain, but I feel like with sewing, it does. So that's always exciting and I love also these buttons with it, like these little brown buttons. I think they're gorgeous. And yeah, and even like the, this is where I had to um, piece it together. Um, and even that I think turned out looking really good and professional. So yeah, I'm just, I'm really proud of this project. Uh, I think this is one of my best makes to date. I love the way it fits. I feel so cute in it um, and so, so yeah, I'm really proud of this one, but now I will hop out of this one and into this one to kind of talk about the insides and the inner workings of this one here. And we're all changed. That was so fast, right? It's not like it took me tons of time to do all those buttons. Um, but here is the inside of this one. This one I did the typical um, pinking finish. Actually, I did less pinking finish because I got a lot of, um, what is that called? The like nice edge. Uh, it won't come to me, but uh, the nice edge that is already finished um, on these sides, but I did pink the parts that weren't and it's hard to tell if you can see, but I did pink the pockets. Um, I'm really, again, also proud of this one. I feel like I learned a lot. Um, I learned some different like pattern, I mean not pattern, pocket construction. Uh, and then I also feel like I actually did a good job. I didn't do a zipper and I just did the snaps and buttons here and I think I did a pretty good job of having those lined up well. What I will say is I need one more hook here and I had to sub the hook and eye, or hook and eye, is that what they are? The hook and eye is for the snaps. The snaps work fine on my hip where there's no tension, but they work really poorly on my bust here where there is more tension. So I had to add hooks and I'm gonna need to add a third to make it so the white of like whatever I'm wearing under it won't like peek out. Um, but I'm excited because I think both these pieces are gonna be so versatile because I can wear them with so many things under them. Um, and yeah, both of them were actually fully cotton too, which I had thought this was a poly blend and I'd assume this was a poly blend. Um, but any of you who know this know that when you iron polyester, there's a very distinct smell and neither of them had that. So I think these are both fully cotton blends. Um, and I know this was a piece from the 50s. This also just really reminds me of Queen's Gambit. Um, I am, well, definitely felt kind of inspired to do these two makes based on Queen's Gambit just because of all the jumpers in it and she looked beautiful. And I've been watching everybody make their jumpers like Queen's Gambit and decided I kind of wanted to give mine a try. And I think jumpers are really rewarding because they're all the effort of making a dress, but with more versatility. Um, and yeah, I, I also really like the cut of the neckline of this one. I think it's super flattering. Um, and I really like the cut of the sleeves and the bodice on this. Uh, again, I think it's flattering. You'll see in the preview pictures, um, in the reveal that it does ride up on me. And I think that's just a little bit because 
I'm wearing a lot of silky material that just stuff slides. So I think if I'm wearing like a belt or something, it'll be a little less. Um, and then I'm proud of, there's some top stitching here. And I just think it's really cool because I now kind of know how to do a pocket with a zipper. Um, because my pocket, you can see here is the opening and then here is the pocket. And so I've maybe learned how to not have to sacrifice a pocket just because I have a um, zipper there. And then in here, I also, I finished this with bias tape. This is the only bias tape I used because um, the hem is just finished the way I would normally. This is also a little bit of a sheer material, so I will definitely be wearing slips under this. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm so proud of both of these pieces, and I hope you guys enjoyed kind of watching my process as I figured out how to make kind of some t tricky yardages work. Um, this one I will also be making a matching mask with. This one obviously not, because no thank you on breathing through denim. Um, but that is it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Like I've said, I'm trying to do one of these a month where I bring you through the process of a whole project start to finish, and so stay tuned for February's. No idea what that is yet, but I'll figure it out someday soon. Um, so I will see you next video. Bye!